Uh, in this video, I'm going to be doing a rear brake cylinder on a Polo. It will apply to a lot of other um, VWs that have got rear drum brakes. So, to start off with, I've taken out this little screw that goes in here. It's a, a T30. Sometimes you've got to smack the actual drum with a hammer to get it to release the screw. And then it'll come out nice and easy, no need to round it off or anything. And then, to get the actual drum off, Sometimes, again, you have to hit it with a hammer on opposite sides to loosen it. This one is already fairly loose, so I might be able to wiggle it off. Or get a pry bar. I've got a, just a small pry bar. And I'm just going to put it between the drum and the back plate and work my way around. This usually happens if the drum's got a lip, so it sort of sticks behind the shoes. This one, I think it's just over adjusted itself, maybe. Alright, there we go. And as you can see, that's why we're changing the cylinder. It's absolutely wet through with brake fluid. Same with the inside of the drum. So we'll be getting some brake cleaner and uh, get a rag and wipe all that out. Make sure it's dry before it goes back on. And then, same with this, we'll be getting a brake cleaner and a rag just to make sure it's dry before it all goes back together. So now I've got the drum off, we've got access to the brake cylinder, but we actually need to go to the back side to be able to remove it. Right, now we're on the back side. There's a little T30 screw just at the side of this blade nipple here, which needs removing to be able to remove the cylinder. But before we do any of that, got a brake line clamp here which is going to be clamping off the flexor that goes between the axle and the body. Now before I started filming this video I did spray the brake line and the screw at the side of it with WD-40 just to try and break it free. Now these T30s can seize quite badly so you've got to be careful not to snap them or round them off. It's only a tiny screw so you'll know when it's out. That's how big it is. It's only, what, 10 mil of thread? Alright, so that's out. Now we can work on the brake line. So, it's an 11 mil spanner. And I've got to work it back and forth so it doesn't snap the brake line. And could you see how it was twisting it then? Ever so slightly. This one's actually one of the better ones. It freed off straight away. I don't know if that was down to putting WD-40 on it earlier. should come out now. Yep, just like that. Right, back at the front now. So, usually these cylinders are stuck to the back plate, so you've got to get a little pry bar and just lever it behind each end. This side, this one's actually not stuck to the back plate, which is rare. So, there we go. That's the old one off. All you've got to do is pop it off and then you've got to push push the bleed nipple down and through the big part of the hole. It's sort of upside down keyhole shaped. Get you a closer look. So there you can see the big part of the hole is what you need to get the bleed nipple through. I suppose you could remove the bleed nipple if you really wanted, but it's a bit of a waste of time. So that's our new wheel cylinder, but we're gonna clean up the back plate and the shoes and everything before we put this in. So I'm just going to start with some brake cleaner and then a wire brush and then some compressed air. Make sure to wear your eye safety when doing this. It seems quite stubborn that brake fluid, so I'm going to have to use a, a tissue or a rag or something with brake cleaner. Now I think everything that's left now is just residue that's soaked into the shoes. 
and the metal around it. I'm not going to worry about it too much because I know a lot of it will disappear with use. So I've got that cleaned up as best I can. And then I'm just going to put some anti-seize on this back plate here. So the wheel cylinder doesn't stick to it. I think it's had anti-seize on it before as well by the look of it because it came off quite easy. So the new one, obviously I'm just taking out that, uh, that plug and then the bleed nipple obviously needs to go through through the big part of the hole and then up like that. Um, you also will turn these ends, you see how it's got a notch on it there. That needs to be facing to the outside. So this is the back and then this is the outside. So the notch needs to be facing to you when it's installed because that holds the shoes in place from popping out. Uh, and then when we put it in, we need to squash the pistons in. Make sure the brake line's not in the way at the back, pushing it out. And then I might have to pull the shoes out a little bit if it won't go in. Right, so that's that's in flush now. So I can go to the back, put the T30 back in and the brake line. I've put a little bit of anti-seize on the actual screw. And I'm just going to put it back in its hole. You don't need to go crazy, just nip it up. I'll put the brake line back in. Make sure this brake line doesn't cross thread as well. It can be quite easy to do. Especially if you've made new brake lines. Because it won't be holding the same position. And same with this, you don't need to go crazy, just nip it up. And then now I've done that, we can take this little cover off the bleed nipple. We'll crack the bleed nipple off. And we'll get some tissue to put under it. This is just to catch the brake fluid so I don't have to clean it up after. And then we'll remove the flexi clamp and then we'll have to wait a little bit until fluid starts coming through. So it will do it with gravity, you don't need to pump the brake pedal. And there we go, that's the fluid coming through. So now there's going to be no air in the system and you don't have to mess about bleeding and re-bleeding. Just let it drip for 10 seconds or so and then close the valve and top up the brake fluid in the reservoir. I'll just close off the bleed nipple. And then wipe off any excess. And we'll put the dust cap back on. Now we can put the drum back on. Right, so I've just cleaned the drum off camera. And you can see there's still some brake fluid on the outside. Uh, brake cleaner on the outside and then so there's obviously the five wheel bolt holes and there's this little hole here that's what I've got to line this little hole up with actually before we do that we'll put some anti-seize on this wheel bearing Right, that's on now, so I'll put some anti-seize on the actual drum now so the wheel doesn't stick to it. That's how to change a wheel cylinder on a Polo. Thanks for watching.